In this video, I'm going to talk about the common final exam. I'm going to say what is the common final exam, what is day one, day two, and day three, and then I'm going to do a conclusion. So what exactly is the common final exam, or CFI for short? The CFI is a culminating exam at the end of PEP, the professional education program that's run by CPA Canada. The format is that it's a three-day case-based exam. So let's just look. We've got a day one, day two, and day three. These are exams you're going to write on consecutive days. Each exam really has its own purpose and structure. So let's go through each one individually. I'm going to start with day one. This is a four-hour exam and it really focuses on enabling competencies, which are things like critical thinking, decision making, professional judgment, integration of different technical areas. So the real focus for day one is mixing this all up and being able to demonstrate your strong enabling competencies. Key is understanding that the day one case is a roll forward of the capstone one module case. The day one exam takes the company in the capstone one case and moves it forward two to five years. There are new challenges, new issues for the company and for yourself as the CPA who has to provide guidance to your client in this case, which means you're going to provide recommendation on how they should move forward from this point. The day one case is identical for all candidates who took the same capstone one module. But let's just talk about what that actually means. Say that you attended and passed the capstone one module for January 2022. I'm going to use history. So you've submitted the board report, you've made your presentation, and you've passed and you're moving on to capstone two. This particular company was called Creative Toys Inc. In that case, you would have written the day one case in the May 2022 CFI. This was a roll forward of Creative Toys Inc. And this would be considered version one. Now, if you either failed this day one case on the May 2022 CFI, or you decided for personal reasons not to write in May 2022, then you have one more chance to write a roll forward of the Creative Toys Inc. case on day one of the May 2023 CFI. This would be called version two, a second rolled forward. You can see that each January Capstone One case has only two roll forward versions, one in the May of the year that you took the Capstone One module and one in the following May. Now, Let's pretend that you either missed both May 2022 and May 2023 for whatever reasons, or you failed both day one exams on May 2022, May 2023. What happens to you then? And what happens is you have to retake Capstone One module again learn about this new case, submit the board report, do your presentation, and then you're going to write the new day one case for that capstone one. So let's assume that you have to take the January 2024 capstone one module, learn that new case, whatever it is, because it's not been announced yet, and then write the roll forward on day one, in either May 2024 CFI or May 2025 CFI. Again, remember, there's only two roll forward versions for each Capstone One module case. Now, say you took, let's do a new scenario. Say you took the Capstone One module in January of 2022, and you fail day one when you write the May 2022 CFI. Say that you definitely like you're like, I don't want to wait till May 2023 to write version two. So can I write the day one case in September 2022 instead? Right? Seems reasonable. And the answer is a hard no. The September 
CFI is based on a totally different Capstone 1 case, the Capstone 1 case that they do in May of 2022, which in this case was called Can Do Fitness Limited. There is no roll forward of the Creative Toys Inc. case in the September 2022 CFI. Instead, there was a version one of the Can Do Fitness Limited case, a case that you have never seen before because your Capstone 1 module from January 2022 did the Creative Toys Inc. case. There are only two versions of each Capstone 1 module case. And if you take the January Capstone 1 module, you must write the May CFI for day one. You can't write the September CFI for day one because there will never be a roll forward of your January Capstone 1 module case. Similarly, if you took Capstone 1 module in May 2022, your case was that can do fitness case, and you'll have two chances to write the day one case in both September 2022 version one and September 2023 version two. If you decide not to write either of these C fees for whatever reason, or you write them both and fail, you're going to have to take a new Capstone 1 module, learn a brand new case, give in the board report, do the presentation, and then you'll be able to write for that particular, whether you did it again in, in the January Capstone 1 module or the May Capstone 1 module, you're then going to be able to write the day one case one more time. So January Capstone 1 module cases flow into the May C fees and the May Capstone 1 cases flow into the September C fees and there are only two versions of each roll forward. If you're unsuccessful or you choose not to write, you will have to take a new Capstone 1 module with a new Capstone 1 case so you can write a brand new roll forward. So when I say that day one is common to all candidates, that actually doesn't mean that you're all writing the same day one case. For the May C fees, some candidates will be writing version one of the current year's Capstone 1 module case, and some candidates will be writing version two of the prior year's Capstone 1 module case. Same for the September C fee. So how is the day one case marked? Well, I'm gonna cover that in a totally separate video. So right now I'm just explaining the different exams. Let's move on to day two of the CFI. This is a five hour exam, so you get five hours to write it. Why? Because the day two case is called the roll case, roll as is R-O-L-E, because candidates get to choose one of four roles and they write the same case, but from the point of view of their chosen role. Candidates can choose to write in the assurance role, the finance role, the performance management role, or the tax role. Candidates have to show depth in their chosen role, whichever it is, at the elective level. What does that mean, the elective level? That means that the depth is at the elective. So when you take, of course, core one, core two, then you take elective one, elective two, the depth is at that elective level. To understand what that exactly means for the exam, let's look at the exam blueprint for each of the electives. So here's the assurance blueprint for April of 2022. You can see that the coverage for this elective includes financial reporting, strategy and governance, assurance, and finance. That means that when you choose the assurance role in day two, the issues that might be tested in that role can include any of these technical areas and you must show depth in them so competence in them so don't just think because i choose assurance the only thing they're going to test me on is assurance they can test me on finance strategy and governance and financial reporting now are they going to test me on assurance absolutely they're going to test me on assurance but they can also test me on any of these other three technical areas why because it was covered in my elective as part of the module. So they can test me on any of these in my day two role. Now, let's look at finance. You can see that the finance elective blueprint for April 2002 is different. It says finance 100%. So what does that mean? Does it mean that 
on my day two, if I choose to write finance, the only thing I'll have to write is a finance role. You'll only ever be tested on finance concepts. And the answer is no. <laughs> I mean, you're looking at this and you're like, yes, the answer is yeah. No, the answer is no. So why is the answer no? Because on the CFI blueprint, you can see the statement that they make right here. They say, although the cases will focus on financial reporting and or management accounting and one of the four electives, all prior learning are also testable and therefore the roles may draw upon any of the core or entry column competencies as part of the required within each role. So they're saying, yes, it's 100% finance, but actually I'm allowed to cover in my role, in the finance role, uh, we have the option to also cover any of the content in the core modules and the undergraduate degree. Entry column means what you got from either your prep program, if you took it with CPA, or your undergraduate degree in accounting. So at the elective level for finance, they don't teach anything new for the other technical areas, but they tell you that they're permitted to test anything from core one and core two and anything from your prep courses. So even though they say it's going to be 100% finance, they can cover other technical areas. So let's look at performance management blueprint, April, 2022. You can see here that financial reporting, strategy and governance, management accounting, and audit and assurance are all being covered in the performance management blueprint. So that means that all of this can be tested in the role portion of the day two case. For taxation, we're back at, hey, it's 100% taxation, so you don't learn anything new from the other technical areas in this elective. But remember that the caveat in the CFI blueprint, any knowledge from your prep, undergraduate, core one, and core two is also testable, but only at the entry or core level. So now that you understand what depth at the elective level means for each of these roles, does this mean that you must have taken the elective module in that role to write the day two case for that role? So what I'm saying is, let's say you take assurance and performance management. Those are the two electives that you choose. Do you have to choose one of these roles on day two? And the answer is, no, you don't. You can choose any role you want for day two, regardless of the electives you took during your PEP program. You're actually required to choose your role at the time that you register for Capstone 2, but you're permitted to change your role at any time up to approximately two weeks before the date of the CFI that you write. Keep in mind I'm saying approximately two weeks, but you should always check with your region for the final date that you have to choose or change your day two role. Rules change, so it's important that you know the rules for your region about the last date you're permitted to change. So again, I'm going to reiterate, keep in mind, you're not required to choose your day two role based on the electives that you took. However, it is highly recommended because if you did take one of these electives, then you would have all the necessary knowledge to demonstrate depth in that role. So even though it's not required, it is highly recommended. Now on day two, are you only going to have to write the areas for your role? And the answer is nope. The day two exam also covers core financial reporting and or management accounting competencies, which are common to every single role. So no matter what role you choose, you're going to have some common financial reporting and or management accounting concepts, right? Issues also called assessment opportunities. That means that everyone, regardless of the role they choose, will write the same financial reporting and or management accounting issues on their exam. Note that this says and or. It may be that the common competencies are all financial reporting or all management accounting or both financial reporting and management accounting. Let's take a look at how this played out in the last five years. So here's a chart that tracks the last five years of the CFIs. You can see that the columns are the year and month of the CFI, the number of financial reporting issues, the number of management accounting issues, the number of issues in each role, and then the total issues altogether. And then whether the case covered IFRS or ASPE. 
So I'm tracking 2018 to 2022. You'll note that there's no May 2020, 2019, and 2018. That's because there was no national C fee in May for those years. Now, if I fill out the chart, you're going to see very quickly that over the last six C fees, both the financial reporting and the management accountings have been covered. And there has always been a total of six common issues. It's either a 2-4 split or a 3-3 split, but in each case, the total common issues have been six. Now, the only anomaly is September 2018 when the common issues were only covering financial reporting and there was only five issues, not six. The trend since then has been a total of six issues split between financial reporting and management accounting with either a 2-4 split or a 3-3 split. For the roles, each role has included 13 issues. So different roles don't have a different number of issues. Every single role has 13 issues that the candidates have to address. Remember that you have to show depth in your role, which means that you can demonstrate your knowledge. Again, I'm telling you this again at the elective level. There has almost always been a total of 19 issues, except in 2018, of course, but the trend has been 19 issues in five hours. And you'll also note that coverage of IFRS and ASPE is random. There's no discernible pattern to what will be tested, whether it's IFRS or ASPE. If you look at all the years of the CFI since 2015, you would be able to see that we can't guess at what will be covered. So you have to know both ASPE and IFRS. So remember, I was talking about why you're given five hours for the day two exam. I said it's because you have to show competence in your role as well as in financial reporting and or management accounting. But the additional time is also given because the information provided, both the common information for the financial reporting and management accounting and the information for your role may be relevant or irrelevant. So the additional time is given so that you can critically evaluate all the information you're given and you're given a lot of information and then you can determine what information is relevant to you in your role. One of the most frequently asked questions is whether there's a role that is easiest. I want to take the easiest role. Everyone always wants to choose the easiest role in order to pass the exam. I want to be super clear about this. There is no difference in the pass rate between the four roles. So if one role was truly easiest and people tell me all the time, assurance is the role you have to take. It's the easiest role. Everybody passes assurance, blah, 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 blah. If that was true, we would see a significant difference between the pass rates. So assurance, people who write assurance would have these astronomical pass rate and everybody else writing the other three roles would not. And there is no such difference. There's none. It is not that the assurance role is easiest or hardest or anything else. So if there is no difference in the pass rates for any of the four roles, and don't listen to anybody who tells you that there is because there's not, then which role should you choose? Well, if you want to be licensed as a public accountant, you have to choose to write and be competent in the assurance role on day two. Just to be clear, your competence in your role is assessed only on the day two issues that are given to you in that role on day two. So you have to be competent in assurance. In addition, you must be competent in financial reporting over the combined day two and three exams. Remember, your competence in your role is assessed only on the issues in your day two case, but your competence in financial reporting is actually assessed over all of the issues on both day two and day three. So stepping back, if you want to be a public accountant, then your role is actually chosen for you, assurance. But what if you're not interested in being a public accountant? And, and generally, the number of people who get their CPA and become public accountants and actually work in public accounting is between 9 and 11%. So most CPAs do not work in public accounting. 
and they don't have to be licensed as public accountants. So if you're not interested in being a public accountant and you have the right to choose, then what role should you choose? And what you should choose is the role you know the best. So if you work in finance, then you should choose finance because it's likely that the technical concepts that are going to be tested on day two is what you do regularly as part of your job. And if you work in tax, you have extensive knowledge in tax law. Why not leverage that to write the day two exam for the CFE? You'd be crazy not to use your day-to-day -day knowledge to help you pass the day two exam. If you work as a management accountant in any company, then choosing performance management is likely the way to go because that's what you do every single day. Again, we're back to the fact that if you do something every single day, then you're already ahead of the game when it comes to studying for day two. And you should choose the role that you do every single day. And if you work in assurance, well, then you likely had to sign a contract that stipulated that you were going to write assurance in day two. So, you know, it's chosen for you, but keep in mind because you work in assurance every single day, it's still going to benefit you to write assurance because that's what you do every single day. What role you should never choose is the one you don't do for a living every single day. That's my take on which role to choose. Choose the one you do every day so that you can leverage your knowledge and never listen to anyone who says one role is easier than another role. The easiest role is the one that you know the most about. If I work in tax and someone tells me you should, you shouldn't write tax. Tax is really hard. How do I know they don't hate tax? If I hate something, it's really hard for me. But if I'm working in tax and I really enjoy tax, then tax is probably the easiest thing for me to learn. It doesn't matter that other people find tax hard. Tax is not hard for me right? So keep that in mind. Choose what you know the best, what you think is enjoyable, what you do every single day, because that's the one that you're going to pass. And again, there is no difference in the pass rate between these four roles. There is no role that is easiest. The easiest one is the one that you know best. Okay, we're finished with day two. Let's move on to day three. This is a four hour exam. The focus on day three is to show breadth of knowledge covering all six technical areas. So that's assurance, finance, financial reporting, management accounting, strategy and governance, and tax. The focus here is really on ensuring that you're going to be a well-rounded, knowledgeable CPA in all the technical areas, regardless of what you are asked to do as a future CPA. So again, we're looking for breadth across all six technical areas. So how have all these technical areas been tested in the last five years? I created this chart. It has all the technical areas that have been covered in day three. I've started off with the first column being the year and month of the CFE, and then each technical area listed with the total for all the issues on day three on the right hand side. So I'm showing you the last five years, again, no national CFEs in 2020, 2019, and 2018 for May. You can quickly see that on average, there are two to four issues for both financial reporting and management accounting. You'll notice that they're all over the place, right? Like 2022 September, you see there's three financial reporting and four management accounting, but then on May, there's four financial reporting and two management accounting. So why are these two technical areas all over the place? And it's because what is tested on day three for financial reporting and management accounting is totally dependent on the number of financial reporting and management accounting issues that were on day two. So what does that mean? It means that for financial reporting and management accounting, I've already mentioned this, I'm going to mention again, your competence in both of these technical areas is determined by marking all of the financial reporting and management accounting for both day two and day three together. To understand this better, let's look at a chart that tracks these two technical areas only for both day two and day three. So here's a different chart where I'm tracking the issues over day two and day three for 
for financial reporting management accounting last five years. You can see that I have a column for the year month of the CFI covering the same period as I did previously. And I'm tracking the total issues for financial reporting and management accounting between the two days of the CFI, day two and day three. Remember, for day two, these issues are common to all candidates. So everyone has addressed the exact same issues for these two technical areas on their day two case. Okay, looking at financial reporting first, you can see that each year there are six financial reporting issues over the two days. Sometimes it's two and four, and sometimes it's three each day. Only in 2018 was it five issues on day two for financial reporting and only one issue on day three. But historically since then, it's been six with a, a three, three or a four, two breakdown. You can see for management accounting, it's a totally different ballgame. Between the two days, it ranges from five total issues in 2018 to seven in 2019 and 2022, September. Historically, it appears to be mainly six, but no guarantee on that. It does range. What we can say for sure is that the financial reporting and management accounting issues are split between the two days, day two and day three. The financial reporting issues for both day two and day three are marked together in order to determine your competence in financial reporting. And for management accounting, it's the same. The issues on day two and day three are marked together to determine your competence in management accounting. And let's be clear, you must be competent in either financial reporting or management accounting to pass the CFI. I'm going to say this again. You have to be competent in either financial reporting or management accounting in order to pass the CFI. You have to be competent in financial reporting overall in order to get a license as a public accountant. So moving back to looking at the chart for day three only. It's because these two technical areas are marked together for both days that the issues on day three for both financial reporting and management accounting change so much. Like they range between two and four issues, even as high as five issues in 2018. What we're seeing here only makes sense when we look at both days together for these two technical areas, as I did on the previous slide. So now let's look at all the other technical areas assurance, finance, strategy and governance, and tax. Here, there are on average three issues on day three. Sure, there's there's a few anomalies. So we can see on May 2021, assurance had four, and in September uh, 2019, strategy and governance had four. But for all the other exams, it was three for all four technical areas. Now, to be clear, just because there are three issues for each technical area doesn't mean that each of the day three cases will have one issue. So let's say there are three day three cases. It's not like each day three case will have one assurance and one finance and one strategy and governance and one tax. It doesn't work like that. It could be that one case will have two assurance and then another case will have one assurance. It's possible that one case has three tax and the other cases don't have any tax. So we can't know that they're going to be all scrunched together in one case or spread out over three cases or cover it only in two cases. Um, I'm making an assumption that the day three exam is going to be three cases because historically it has been three cases. So just be aware that we have no idea where these technical areas will be placed in the cases. It could be, it'll show up in one of the cases. It could show up in two of the cases, it could show up in three of the cases. We actually don't know. All we know is that historically there have been three assessment opportunities, three issues, three concepts from each of these four technical areas in every single day three since 2018, with the exception of those two that I mentioned. In total on day three, there tends to be 18 issues. Again, with two anomalies in 2022, September, there was 19 and 2019, September, there was 20. So now we know about the technical areas covered on day three of the CFI. What level of knowledge do you have to demonstrate? And the level of knowledge you have to demonstrate is either at the entry level 
or at the core level from core one or core two. No knowledge from the elective level is necessary. So if you took, let's say, the performance management, which is basically management accounting on steroids. So if you took performance management on day two, that's your role, you do not demonstrate that elective level knowledge on day three. Instead, you only demonstrate your entry and core level knowledge. One question that I get really often is, you know, if I wrote, say, tax on day two, do I still have to write the issues for tax on day three? After all, if I've already shown competence in tax on day two, then I should be able to ignore the tax issues on day three. Basically, what this candidate is asking is if they can omit the technical issues on day three if they wrote that role on day two. And the simple answer is absolutely not. I want to be really clear here. You must demonstrate breadth on day three for all technical areas, regardless of what you wrote on day two. When candidates say this to me, that I'm not going to cover tax because I wrote tax on day two, I have to give my head a shake. I want to be so clear on this. You must, must write all the technical areas for day three. The people who are marking your day three cases, they don't know what you did on day two. They're not saying, oh, you were competent on day two. You don't need to do tax on day three. No, the people who are marking your day threes are not the same as your day two markers. And therefore, they don't know what you did on day two. You will write day three and you will be at the core entry and core level with regards to your knowledge and show your breadth in all six technical areas, period, regardless of what you wrote in day two. Okay. Now, the day three exam is made up of three to four different cases, cases which place you into different roles in different companies. Note that historically over the last five years, there have only been three cases, but it can be four. Never say never, it could be four. Generally, the cases require a minimum of 45 minutes and a maximum of 90 minutes, but cases can require more than 90 minutes. CPA Canada has indicated that if it's going to be longer than 90 minutes, they'll advise you of that. But generally, the cases are 70, 75, 80, 85, and 90 minutes. And, and you know, add it all together, they, they equal four hours. Historically, the last case has been the shortest. But that could change. So, you know, don't take it as gospel. But historically, in the last five years, the last case has always been the shortest one. Day three is common to all candidates. Everyone writes the exact same exam, the exact same cases. So let's just summarize what I covered in this video. Day one is a four hour exam that is a roll forward of your capstone one case that you covered in your capstone one module. The focus is on enabling skills such as critical thinking and professional judgment. The day two case is a five hour case where you have to demonstrate your core knowledge in financial reporting and or management accounting and competence at the elective level for your chosen role. You have to choose either assurance, finance, performance management, or tax. Note that the financial reporting and or management accounting issues are common to all four roles. Finally, day three is a four hour exam covering three to four different cases, which cover all six technical areas. You must demonstrate the breadth of your knowledge at the entry and core levels for all six technical areas. The cases are common to every single candidate. Well, that's it for what exactly is the CFI. I hope you found this helpful and thanks so much for watching.